Dzień dobry Państwu, witam po kolejnym seansie Krakowskiego Festiwalu Filmowego 61. Ja się nazywam Krzysztof Kwiatkowski, ale to akurat ma to mniejsze znaczenie, bo na najważniejszy poza Państwem widownią jest nasz gość, reżyser filmu Borderland, Andreas Wojt. Hello, good to see you. Dzień dobry Państwu. Tak, niestety Pan Andreas nie mógł przyjechać, no bo wciąż jeszcze są limity, limity ograniczenia kwarantanny. But I'm so glad that you're with us, uh, well, at least virtually. I must say that in your film there's so much nature that I decided to uh, change the set of, I mean, change my flat to make a set with a little bit of nature. But obviously, uh, It's not only film about nature. I mean, you you decided to go back to this region, to this uh, exactly as in the title Borderland, after nearly 30 years, after the film you made in you made in 91, which premiered in 92, I think, uh, Grenzland Ein Reise. Mm. Just let me ask the simplest question: Why? Uh, first, uh, I go back this 30 years ago because after the unification, after the collapse of our so-called socialist system, um, I had the feeling I have to, to go to this border and to, to see what's happening there because it has a personal reason because I had a, my studies in Poland in 72-73, part of my studies in Krakow. And, This was a reason for me personally to go, to go there. So and and then we did this film in in ninety one Grenzland Grenzland eine Reise, and yeah now you know thirty years later it could be even twenty nine or thirty one years later to 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 do this film, but often these special dates are helpful in financing things also. So but it's it's not the the most important thing. So but. Of course, after this film 30 years ago, I wanted to 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 know to show what what is going on there now. Uh, is the situation changed deeply? Is it similar? What kind of people are living there? Um, this was the reason to go there. And of course, um, one idea was to maybe to to meet one protagonist from from this ancient film. Uh, again, what what we did finally was with Carla, we met her again. So, well, that's also my question because obviously it's the film about it's multi layered. It's about uh, the concept of border, about our societies. But first of all, it's about people. I'm one, I'm wondering how did you meet them? How did you choose them? You know, um, I had, I was lucky, I, I had uh, some money from the film Förderung in, uh, in, in Saxonia. And so I was lucky to, yeah, truly to, really to have half a year, at, uh, I think it was in 2017 or, or 18, uh, 17, and to travel there. I had time and a bit of money to travel there. And this is what we are doing in documentary filmmaking. Yeah? You go into your car or you take your bike and you travel and then you then you meet people. Mm -hmm. Of course, not all by chance. And of course, but it's like uh, you sit on a river and you, you put stones into the water and then you have the circles and the circles and the circles and where these circles are. Uh, uh, meeting each other, so you have a new adventure. So of course, somebody told me, "Oh, you have to 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 meet this person, and to, you have to sp speak to to him or her." This is the way how it how it works always in for me always in documentary filmmaking. It's really f traveling and doing um, yeah, meeting people and doing photographs still. So I take my photo camera and uh, my car and then I start. This was you, you, I, So you had four cinematographers, so probably it was the long journey. Yeah, it was, it was a long journey, sure. Um, and what I always um, do, I take a lot of pictures. It is, the reason is um, you feel in, in a part of a second, you feel if this person, if this protagonist, this man or this woman in front of your camera likes the idea to being 
to be filmed or photographed. So and that is very important. Really, in a way, it, let me say it is a way of, of course, this is documentaries and it's another thing, but in a way, it's also a, a way of casting. So you are looking for, for stories of people and you are, of course, um, depending on, on the protagonist, on his or her uh, will to tell a story. Mm -hmm. And this is how it works. So were people, uh, were people eager to tell their stories? Uh, no, no. What always helps, of course, by traveling um, is, when you, for me, it was easier because I'm sp speaking somehow Polish and understand good enough still Polish. So it helps always to to connect to be connected to people. Yeah? When when I did a lot of films also in foreign countries, but um, of course in, in countries where I I didn't uh, where I don't speak the language, so I, I I had the help of an interpreter. But in if you have this language and if you use it, then mostly the people are very very open and 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 friendly. And of course. In this, this is another thing, another reason um, on both sides, on our side and on your side, these are landscapes or, or mostly villages. We have only some of smaller towns and it's not so in the focus of, of media interest, these areas, not on your side and not on our side. And I think um, so the people are, not so fed up maybe with with media coming and telling stories there and there and, and looking in every uh, pot so and this is i think it's also a reason that is um, easier in in these regions mm -hmm. i mean i'm asking because because uh, mm, i mean that's obviously they, they they seem very open to you but obviously that's also your workshop as a documentary filmmaker to open people but what i want to ask is all those private stories they tell, sometimes very harsh, the private stories of their uh, of mm. their families, but also very influenced, hugely influenced, or even created by this big history, by wars, by changing regimes, by relocations, obviously. Uh, and uh, it seems to me in, in your documentary that this 20th, the story of 20th century is everywhere there, in stones, in bean, in... Mm those batons of soldiers found yeah, on yeah, on, yeah. Uh, on the field. So I'm wondering, yeah. do you feel that this is this region which is so filled up of history? Yeah, when of course, it's as in a way, uh, all our regions where we are living in are, f are filled up with history. But uh, but this, this border between uh, Germany and Poland, as we know from the from not only from from the last century, I mean after World War II or during World War II, what what happened? Terrible things happened there uh, after the Germans uh, uh, went into Poland. Um, but the whole history before these two hundred fifty years from from the year seventeen ninety two, from the first. Um, First situation when Poland was divided into pieces from by the Germans, uh, by the Pr uh, Prussians, and and the Russians and the Austrians. So and and this was always going there and going there and 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 this is of course um, what what is deeply connected with with the history and with the life of these people. And and the other thing, um, a lot of people are now. I mean, on your side. The, the the origin their origin is more in the east they are coming i mean the, the parents or the grandparents of these people are living there now they are coming from former ter polish territories in in the ukraine for example eh? and 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 the people i mean the, the elderly people are living here on on our side on the east side uh, a lot of them um of these elderly people they lived on the now Polish side, and a lot of them after World War II decided, okay, okay, I go, I will not stay here, I go westward. So a lot of them went to the west, I mean, to, to West Germany, and uh, other people stayed because they had this hope, maybe we can go back one day, mm -hmm. crossing the Oder and and settle down again where we, where we lived, yeah? So this is 
what what history, what all these terrible wars and and politics and and uh, during these last two hundred fifty years did with 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 your country, especially, this is deeply in in inside all of the people and in the memory. Yeah, even if they even if if you maybe don't know exactly what is it, it is inside you because it's this is from the stories of the grandparents of the parents and and even if you are born long long time later after after World War II, um, uh, something is still there. Yeah. Do you feel this also in present relations between people and in modern in modern everyday life? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, of course, not. In, is, is there are people more connected with the history, sure, and there are people less connected with the history. But nobody, nobody is without history. Even if you want to be without history or without, let me say, politics, you are always. Every human being is influenced by history and politics, even if we don't want it, or if we saying we are not influenced. Although it seems to me that you chose chose people uh, who somehow uh, mm, go, oh, uh, uh, who sometimes. I'm sorry. Yeah, one more time. You, 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 it seems to me that you choose people who uh, overcome those differences and uh, and show that uh, well, the history is history, and which is important and important to remember. But uh, uh, they decide to not to let the stereotypes, the the memories, uh, for example, break their connections with with neighbors, actually. Uh, yeah, what's really interesting or was interesting for me uh, during this research and, and shooting period um, that is a landscape now for, for let me see, pioneers, yeah, like, uh, like this Australian couple, yeah, they sold their properties in Australia, uh, uh, of course, not uh, influenced, uh, influenced by, by the globalization and, and by the cr financial crisis. They had this idea, okay, I can buy their land, it's cheaper than in Australia, so let's let's try it. Yeah. And then they came to Poland and and with a hope and and, and a will to do something. Um, and they settled down in this in this little village. And of course, they come, they are coming to a place what is full of history. Yeah. And um, of course, they, they live their daily life and their, their new life because they 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 have to work, they have to, to raise their children, but the place is connected um, with history. And, and uh, so during their living, making their living there, they, they're discovering for themselves partly or parts of this history, what they didn't know before. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry, one second. I, I, um... So switched off. So. But, I, but I think also about all those images of uh, people from Poland and Germany being friends and and having great uh, contacts and uh, watching it, I was thinking, was it your, uh, I mean, for sure it was your conscious choice because it's your film, but uh, you decided not to mention, for example, the official politics because now Polish historical uh, and, po and Polish history politics of history are very strong and it seems to me that they aim to divide people rather than connect and mm. Uh, mm. but it's not in your film so i guess it was your conscious choice yeah it is not in my film maybe not so directly but if you if you have a look to the the, the this young uh, polish uh, protagonist this girl aniela in the end of the film um, it is connected with, of course, more connected with today's politics in Poland and not so much with the past, but it is connected with the politics. Huh? And she's speaking about their hopes and, and, and their living in Poland and why she's leaving this your country or her country and uh, what she demands or what she wants to have as a, as a citizen. Then I feel that is very strongly. Uh, uh, connected with yeah with um, with politics in in the country, for example. Uh, or if you if you if you look, sorry, one 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 sentence. If you look to this uh, to uh, to this workless um, 
old man who's uh, uh, watching this dismantling of these houses there. It's on, on, on our side and he's, he's, this, he's worthless there for years and years. And then he's describing uh, what he is, what he was, yeah, where he comes from. Um, then it is, of course, I think also a lot connected with our today's politics in, in our countries or in my country. In this well, but I meant mostly rise of nationalism, rise of uh, suddenly, suddenly everything must be named national in Poland. Suddenly, oh, yeah. okay. suddenly okay. we, I mean, not we, but I feel, maybe you don't agree, but I feel that the official politics, uh, uh, they tend to forget that there are, I mean, most of Poland, uh, most of Poland is, uh, you can, you can see those, uh, incredible this incredible melting of different cultures and this is what what is also in your film you you can call it clash of cultures or melt or a melting yeah. of cultures yeah. this is also this functioning of different mentalities on the same land and and influencing each other it was very interesting to me yeah as, and you know what of course this is a very like all my, my documentaries, they are, of course, personal uh, documentaries. It's my, my point of view. Yeah, this is what I'm doing there. This is not, of course, not like, like a, a reportage. So it's my point of view. And if other people going there and making films, maybe they, or for sure, they will make completely other films. And, uh, but this is what, what I feel there and what, what is, interesting still for me is this um yeah this is maybe it's a little bit tricky what i'm saying now i have sometimes the feeling that um that on the polish side the people if they are speaking all also about history they are feeling deeper than on our side mm. you know what i mean um um, and that, I think the, that the wounds are more open. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if the wounds more open. Maybe it's also connected with the, the wounds, of course. And they, they were the Polish people were the victims of this terrible World War II. And these well, traces. Ev ev everyone was a, was a victim. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, not not everyone, but yeah, everyone was a victim. That's true, but. Mm -hmm. um, they, they um, six million people were killed in World War II, and it's still, still there, yeah, in 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 the feeling of of, of the people, yeah, even even in, in, in maybe in the younger generation, not so strongly, but for example, in my generation, it is it's very, um, it's I'm very connected with this situation still. Yeah, and it's still the subject of political discussion, and and. And it's very; those are very rough discussions. And now I feel like mm. uh, now I now I feel that uh, the official the, the official institutions they attack very strongly. For example, uh, scientists and researchers who research yeah. Uh, yeah. history, yeah. But, but that's maybe you know different. I mean, I'm sorry, a lot of things touch me here. Uh, yeah. um, a lot of things that's happening around, but but also you mentioned the uh, um, people from from German side uh, and the politics of of uh, of Germany, East West Germany, now the Germany, uh, the United Germany. Uh, it's also those econo economics of uh, this region. They I feel that they also uh, well that they are they are uh, responsible for the rules of uh, of this region for example a lot of people abandoning uh, abandoning east germany yeah uh, but you know on the, on on our side the situation is a lot of people after after unification i mean after after 89 1990 a lot of people and still especially young people and this is, is what you can see still till now that a lot of young people are, are leaving this area uh, because there is no you have a beautiful landscape and you have nice villages um created and uh, renovated with a lot of 
money after after uh, uh, the 90s after unification but there are no jobs so then the young people are going and the the elderly people staying there because they have no chance for another job also they are so old that this no no way to 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 leave this uh, this this their own house but on the other hand what is very very uh, very funny um this is not so in my film but it's very funny that because you have now a lot of houses in this region and polish people from Chechen, for example coming buying houses in in, in germany because it's cheaper to buy a, a house really? close to the border uh, in in Germany, uh, in, a, in a little uh, German village, than to buy a double room flat uh, in in Szczecin, yeah, especially in the areas there in, uh, in uh, near to to Schwed and to Szczecin is only half an hour by car or twenty five minutes by car to to go to work, and this this is maybe and these historical historical processes is a long term thing, yeah, so. It, takes years and years and decades and decades this normalization so and, and this is also a point uh, of uh, where you can see a kind of normalization even also this australian people uh, in a way is this it's it's this, on one hand is globalization on the other hand is this is this something um what is becoming more normal that people from other cultures from other countries coming going there because they have a reason to go there mostly it's mostly it's for economical reasons sure for for work not for the beautiful landscape it's more for work but it's it's uh, it's becoming more normal and this is is is, is good to see yeah mm -hmm. after all these terrible things happened during the last century even though you show the one Mm, disturbing scene when Polish seller uh, doesn't want to sell cigarettes to uh, someone uh, from to uh, refugee from to uh, Kurdish refugee. Uh, uh, yeah, you have this nationalism. On the other hand, you have this extremely mm. nationalism. You have it in Poland, but you have it in Germany too. Huh? Maybe it's not so. But now, no, you can see it very clearly in yes, Germany. There's also this scene about uh, NPD, Yeah. Yeah, this, this young Kurdish refugee with his car and was written NPD. Yeah? So you have this on both sides. Yeah? This is a, it's an international problem. Yeah? What we, what is uh, growing and growing in a moment, and it's, it's a dangerous thing. I guess this is also one of the biggest differences. Uh, well, the so the Kurdish. Uh, Kurds immigrating and Syrian refugees, it's biggest but probably difference between what you saw in 91. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, but for example, with, with this Salman, uh, this Kurdish refugee, he came, he came five years ago, he came to Germany or six years ago. Um, and it is really amazing what, um, what happened to him he was lucky of course he found someone who was supporting him uh, he has a job and and he uh, this uh, the owner of this uh, of this company said okay uh, stay with me you're a good worker and he found a flat or an, an own house and now he is in this is a really tiny village that living maybe 250 300 uh, people living there and he's the only one from abroad yeah he's uh, the first uh, the first man coming from a foreign country in this german community yeah this is this is it's a crazy situation but he stays there yeah? and he wants to stay and he changes the people there making them and he changes yeah? and, and new realities are changing the mind of the people yeah? even if it's takes time and time and time and time mm -hmm. and maybe our life is not long uh, not it's too short to 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 yeah to to get all these changes what we what we would like to have in our hearts and minds going back for a while to our I mean our Polish side uh I guess I guess all the all, both of the sides are, are just ours so <laughs> Yeah, Not necessarily German and Polish, but you know. But uh, to going back to Polish side, may I ask you, 
uh, from your life, what made you go to Krakow uh, to study physics? It was completely by chance. When, when I was very young, 16, 17, my teacher came to me and at school and he said, okay, you are bright in, in math and physics. Don't you want to have your studies abroad? And for me, it was, um, um, of course, I said, okay, I go there. It's wonderful because I wanted to leave I wanted to to leave my hometown now yeah? not not so much my parents but my hometown this was tiny there i had the feeling i have to go uh, out uh, of this town into the world uh, like everyone when when he is 15 16 17. and then i had this examination there and i had no idea about poland at all uh, all was what i had in my mind was for soviet union because we had russian at school so and and after this examinations they told me okay we have no more places uh, for studies in Russia, um, but you can go to Poland and you have three hours to decide if you if you agree. <laughs> and then I was I was there, I was 17 then, and I said, okay, what do I know about Poland? I had only three information. The first information was um, uh, my father, the, or the generation of my father, not my father personally, because he was in World War II in Africa, but the generation of my father brought World War II into Poland or into the world, uh, first to Poland. The second information is the land, um, uh, uh, Poland is, is a neighbor in, in the East. <laughs> and this third information was Warsaw is the capital of, of Poland. This, when uh, these were these three informations I had. That's the, and, the starting and, point. And I, said, and I said to myself, okay, when I say no, I have to go back to my hometown, what I didn't want to, to, to do. I wanted to go out and I said, yes, okay, I go to Poland. And really, um, it, it, it happened by chance. But for me, um, it was really, uh, I'm very, very lucky because in, in, the, in the early 70s, Poland was the most pluralistic country in the, in the whole Eastern Bloc, yeah, more pluralistic, I think, than Hungary. Um, and it was um, every Polish family had um, had um, company and uh, families in, in, in the US or in France or in Italy. So even if it was not, not easy, Polish people could travel, what we couldn't. There was a wonderful uh, uh, theater and music scene in Krakow, you could, we could see what was in the GDR in East Germany, where I come from, uh, impossible, you could see every year the newest West, uh, Western, as I mean, uh, uh, films from, from the West, um, you had wonderful theater, you had, the, Poland had the only museum for modern, really modern arts, as was well from the, from the whole Eastern Bloc, it was in Łódź, yeah? so, and 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 the whole atmosphere it was very liberal and open and friendly and and um, of course it was connected in, in, in your country it was it was the first years of Gehrig came to power so a lot of political and economical things changed I think and there was a hope there also and it was so yeah open so and this was was I was young I was 18 19. And these are the years when where we are mm -hmm. so open to, for everything. So and I'm very, very lucky, lucky that I had the chance to, to spend um, my use or part of my use there in Poland. It helped me a lot. But from today's perspective, it must uh, be also very interesting because you because you watch, I would say, you watch Poland in episodes. You saw Poland of Gierek, you show mm -hmm. Poland, you sorry, you saw and and portrayed also Poland of uh, 91, just after the transformation. And you see Poland nowadays, I'm wondering from your perspective, which is very interesting because sometimes outsiders perspective is most interesting. Do you see how, for example, mentality did you change? How people change? How mentality changes, sir? This is difficult. Um, if the mentality changed it's difficult to answer for me i'm i'm my private opinion i i like it very much uh, to be in poland and to meet people there because they are what we what we are looking for when we are traveling we want to see people not the same people like we are we want to have other 
uh, other adventures, other opinions, other, other, other feelings. And this is what, what I like in Poland. Of course, I see that a lot of, you have in a moment, a lot of problems on different levels. And, uh, and especially if you, if what you mentioned, the nationalism, what you say in Poland is, it is, it is in Poland, but you feel it, you find it in, in other countries too. And you have, you go through a very difficult political process. Um, what is, um, what is really difficult, I think, and, and brings a lot of problems. And and you see it in the European community, what is there, what, where are the parts of, let me say, Hungary and Poland, some, it is, yeah, it's it's a long way for all of us to to come together, and I'm uh, I'm not so very convinced if we will manage this way. I mean, we as Europeans, so it is. I feel it that we are in a dangerous situation. But nevertheless, if you if you meet people, let me say normal people, you can be wherever you want. You always find in the world wonderful people and you always find idiots and the thing of of let me say now of europe and the, and the, and the uh, relations between poland and um, and and germany it's it's good that you have can bring the these people together they want to change something in their generations and this is what what the chance maybe for us is. It's, it is also a chance of all these open borders. Yeah, I remember the time when I had my studies that the borders were still closed. Yeah, and I remember the time in till till 1990, the, till the end of, of, of the Eastern Bloc, that we could not travel. Yeah, but uh, and now it is so normal for everybody. Yeah, that we can. I don't speak about the, the, the pandemic situation, but it's so normal for everybody to go wherever you want. To, to work where you want to work and to, to meet whom you want to meet. And this is so um, crazy still for me. So, so because I, I still feel the situation we had before 89. Yeah. Before 89, but even after 89. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I remember too being, you know, being investigated at the border and it was yeah. kind, kind of humiliating. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm, but you mentioned this because uh, we 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 got used to the world the well be not the world but Europe without without borders Europe without uh, well, Europe in which you can travel freely and suddenly pandemic comes and suddenly the whole concept of border is back and yeah and then there are there are checks on the border. I mean, checks that, you know, that, uh, that we, are, we are checked or the borders are closed. And I'm wondering how, how do you think, how this uh, influenced us? I think if, it's, if it stays for a long time, of course it will influence us, but I, have the, I hope that in a relatively short time, I think during the next two weeks or months, when all these vaccinations are successful, more or less successful, then we, this border will be completely open like they, like they were before, I'm sure. So you're not afraid that this uh, experience of exactly Europe, in which countries are closed, uh, it, it won't stay in us. No, I'm not afraid. Not afraid um, uh, connected with a pandemic situation. Yeah. Of course, I'm sometimes afraid um, if you look to our economical situations or if you look for, for, for countries like, like Great Britain that they left the European um, the EU. So <sighs> nobody knows what the future brings, but I have my hope is that that what we are living now that we are living in an in a continent even if we are very very different all we are living together in a continent and these borders are open we can go wherever we want we can we can marry whom we want we can work where we, where we want to work this is it's it is 
it is in in a lifetime in it is such a success in in what we went through is is my feeling in this 30 years um after after 89 after 1990 after the system collapsed it is a really a great chance for us still and and i hope also if if i look to a younger generation um so what i can see yeah it's really a hope yeah mm -hmm. Those, those were the words of someone who who likes people. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. I, what, I, what I like is really telling stories about people and with people. This is my profession. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So thank you for all the stories of people uh, that you told us in, uh, in Borderland. And thank you for the film and, and for the meeting. And thank you so much. Thank you so much, Christoph. I wszystkiego dobrego. No i trzymaj się. <laughs> Dziękuję bardzo. Cześć. Dzięki.